In this one, the slow tempo, minor key, and legato melody give this piece a sad, melancholy character. And finally, this one. The major key, with a moderately loud legato melody at a medium tempo, gives this piece a calm, lilting character. Now, you should be fully prepared for this section of the oral tests. And if this video has helped in any way, please give it a like and subscribe to stay up to date with future uploads. Thanks for listening. Новогодние праздники хочется просто подеванить. Алис, включи гадкие я. Подарите себе отдых с телевизором на платформе Яндекс ТВ. Покупайте телевизор с Яндекс ТВ ДНС. Уже одни такие. Эх, я ничего не ожидал. И орал трейнер, recognizing tonality for grades three to eight oral. The new musical feature you are expected to recognize from Grade 3 ABRSM Oral and upwards and Grade 4 Trinity Oral is that of tonality, in other words whether a piece is in the major or a minor key. You will also be asked questions on dynamics, articulation and changes in tempo in Grade 3 ABRSM Oral, but these have been covered in previous videos and so only that which is new i.e. tonality, will be covered in this video. If you want further practice at recognizing dynamics, articulation and tempo changes, see the links in the description below. To distinguish between major and minor is very simple. Major sounds happy and minor sounds sad. Be careful not to let the tempo confuse you. A major key piece might be at a slow, very relaxed pace, but still have a smile on its face. Similarly, a minor key piece might be fast and lively, but the overall mood is much darker, stormier. So, 
to practice recognizing. Для тебя я всегда онлайн, только не игнор и давай позалипай. Лишь ты и я, и нас ничего не тает, просто напиши мне что-нибудь по фану, фану, фану. Если дочка тук-тук-тук открывай, хочешь быть со мной, ну тогда завоевай, если ты не все... Добрый вечер, в Киеве здесь всего доброго, и я расческа. Ну посмотрите, что произойдет дальше. Она размована. И к сегодняшнему 25 декабря, то есть к западному Рождеству, именно эту расческу можно считать подарком от российских ядерщиков и разведчиков. Почему? И почему также это символ одной потрясающей любви, как это и другие главные темы этого года. Ростислав Пляд. Я буду молчать. Юрий Никулин. Святослав Рихтер. Ну, кто еще очень необычный жил в этом доме? Кого еще мог здесь видеть? Александр Ширвин. Ты один остался, понимаешь? Ты и я. Только у нас впервые в телеобъективе квартира живших здесь советских разведчиков-нелегалов, добывших атомные секреты. Какая их связана история любви? И что теперь, запущенным с их помощью первым реактором под бомбу? И вот на этом месте мы вообще можем сказать, что ядерная война не будет. Ну да, конечно, и надо будет последний. Так на что намекал президент на пресс-конференции? А он ведь намекал. Сегодняшний первый полет нового российского самолета МС-21 именно с российским композитом крылом. Что теперь ждут в Ростехе? И именно сегодня же новый атомный ледокол и новая подводка генералиссиму Суворов. Куда все это пойдет? Сегодняшняя коленция от премьер-министра Молдавии. Почему она считает, что переговоры с Россией по газу шли не так, как надо? И что первопроходцы по этому вопросу в Киеве? Сегодняшние украинские ночные телеэфиры. Новость о том, что Киев не собирается нападать на Донбасс. На самом деле? И в чем невольно проговорилось британское министерство обороны? Сегодняшняя история с грузовиками, которые застряли в снежном безмолвии Якутии. Сегодняшнее новое ограничение на музыку в Афганистане. Как только теперь могут ездить в машинах афганские женщины? Сегодня... Hi everybody, this is Danae, and today's video is all about intermediate piano repertoire. I've already made a video on the piano technique repertoire that I find very helpful, and also on the, for me, ideal repertoire for beginners when playing the piano. So this video is kind of the next in the series, where I chose some pieces that I find are the perfect bridge between the beginner repertoire
repertoire and the full-on hard pieces that you play as an advanced player. I tried to cover the entire intermediate spectrum, mm -hmm. so some pieces are leaning more towards the easier side and some are leaning more towards the harder, almost advanced pieces side. So I hope that you will find something for you in this selection. And if you're interested in that, then keep on watching. So before I get into the video, I just wanted to mention that, as you can probably see from my surroundings, I'm still in Greece. This is my last day in Greece. My festival is over, and I stayed here for a couple days of holiday. And tomorrow I'm going back to Berlin, to my home in Germany. So if there are some sounds from insects or wind, I hope that they won't distract you. <laughs> so the first piece that I want to mention, or actually the first set of pieces, are Beethoven sonatas. Growing up as a piano student, Beethoven sonatas were a vital core part of my learning, and not only my piano learning and technique, building technique, but also of my understanding and learning of music. My teacher at the time, Professor Karen Kemaling, lay a very big value on learning Beethoven sonatas and really learning this music properly. Learning is vital core part of my learning, and not only my piano learning and technique, building technique, but also of my understanding and learning of music. My teacher at the time, Professor Karen Kemaling, lay a very big value on learning Beethoven sonatas and really learning this music properly. And I find that very helpful until today that I learned many Beethoven sonatas when I was young. So I wanted to mention a couple of sonatas that he would always give his younger or youngish students to learn. One of them was Beethoven Opus 2, number 1, which is, I find, a great sonata to start with. It's technically not the easiest, but it is musically, I think, very understandable and a great one to get into the Beethoven sonatas. Another one that you would suggest is Beethoven sonata Pathétique. The Pathétique is also similar, technically really not too hard. I mean, I'm speaking, of course, compared to the other Beethoven sonatas. And also musically, you can definitely understand it and a great introduction to Beethoven. The third beginner, let's say, sonata that I would mention is Beethoven Tempest, so Opus 31, number two, or also Beethoven Opus 10, number one. I think with either of these four sonatas, I would feel quite secure getting into the world of number two, or also Beethoven Opus 10, number one. I think with either of these four sonatas, I would feel quite secure getting into the world of Beethoven sonatas. I would definitely not sit this 10 number one, Tempest, so Opus 31, number two, or also Beethoven Opus 10, number one. I think with either of these four sonatas, I would feel quite secure getting into the world of Beethoven sonatas. I would definitely not suggest to start with one of the late ones. That would be pretty intimidating. So yeah, maybe start with one of those early or middle ones. I think these are great to get into Beethoven and in general to get into that whole period of classical music where it is not anymore Haydn or Mozart, it is already very much Beethoven, but still not the late Beethoven, which is a completely different world in itself. The next set of pieces that I would recommend are Bach pieces, and specifically I would recommend the French suite. I think that these are quote-unquote the easiest, of course none of Bach pieces are easy, but I think that these are the simplest, the English ones and the partitas are way more complex. But um, these ones are pretty doable if you're getting into the world of suites and the different Baroque dances. I think this is a great introduction to that. Or also any prelude and fugue from the well-tempered clavier are a great introduction to this whole polyphonic world. In my beginner repertoire video, I mentioned the inventios and the slightly easier Bach pieces. And I think that once you've already gotten into those, the French suites and the well-tempered clavier are a great continuation of your study of Baroque repertoire. Another Baroque thing that I find a great repertoire piece is any Scarlatti sonata. Scarlatti has written many, many sonatas, so there are many to choose from, from very easy to very hard. So find one that really fits your level and play it. Not only are they musically 
so beautiful and they if you play it in a concert or in an exam or anything where you perform they are so nice to listen to and so much fun to play but also technically they work on many different technical areas so they are very helpful and you could almost do them instead of a study because they all work on one very rp another baroque thing that i find a great repertoire piece is any scarlatti sonata Scarlatti has written many, many sonatas, so there are many to choose from, from very easy to very hard. So find one that really fits your level and play it. Not only are they musically so beautiful, and they, if you play it in a concert or in an exam or anything where you perform, they are so nice to listen to and so much fun to play. But also technically, they work on many different technical areas, so they are very helpful and you could almost do them instead of a study because they all work on one particular technical mm -hmm. aspect. So definitely look into the Scarlatti Sonata. Mm -hmm. Moving on from Beethoven, I would suggest a piece by Mendelssohn, and I would suggest the Rondo Capriccioso by Mendelssohn. It is about a 10 minute long piece, and it is one of the classic pieces by Mendelssohn that my former teacher used to give us in order to get introduced into his world. It starts with a slow introduction with a beautiful musical phrase where you can really work on building a phrase, on building the musical side of a, let's say, slow movement. It's just two pages. And then comes the fast bit, which sounds very virtuoso, but is not extremely hard. Again, it is definitely not easy, but it is very doable if you're slowly getting into Mendelssohn. So I think this is a very good piece to start with when you want to play something by Mendelssohn, and you are an intermediate piano student. Also, you can program it at the end of a concert or at the end of a recital, because it has a very virtuoso, beautiful ending that sounds very impressive and that the audience loves. Next, I would like to mention two pieces by Robert Schumann. One is the Abegg variation. I think these are also one of the classic pieces that my teacher used to give us when we were starting out with this composer. They're called Abegg variations because they are based on a theme of A, B, E, G, G. These are literally the notes. B in German meaning B flat. So it's A, B flat, E, G, G. That's the theme. And then there are variations on that theme. They're very beautiful. They're very, very virtuoso towards the end. But typically Schumann. Never easy to play, but still kind of intermediate level, especially compared to his later pieces. And the other piece by Schumann that I would recommend is Papillon. Papillon is also a variation piece. It means butterfly. Incredibly beautiful, one of his earliest pieces, and also something that I would recommend to study after his album for the youth, which I mentioned in my beginner video. In general, I will definitely link the beginner repertoire and also the piano technique repertoire video that I've already recorded and posted in the description box down below, so you can also check that out. The next piece I would like to mention is by Maurice Ravel, and it is called Jeu d'eau, meaning water games, in a way. I think you can imagine a little fountain and the water droplets dancing around. I think this is kind of what this piece sounds like and what it is supposed to depict. It's very beautiful, and it's definitely an intermediate piece that sounds incredibly nice, that is doable, and that you can program in any program. All these pieces that I'm mentioning are also pieces that you can play as an advanced player, but they are kind of these pieces that are the first step into that new repertoire. So for Ravel, I would definitely mention Julius. The next composer that I want to mention is Frédéric Chopin. For Chopin, I think that in my beginner video, I mentioned some easier waltzes and nocturnes. Obviously, you can get into some harder waltzes and nocturnes, but also I would like to mention two pieces that are definitely also leaning towards the more advanced, harder side, but that I think are great gateways to, into getting into that repertoire. And this is the first scherzo. It's probably the easiest of the scherzos and definitely demanding, but I think doable for you to get into the future ones as well, especially if you're investing a good amount of practice time. And I would also like to mention his first or second ballade. The third and the fourth one are definitely the hardest ones, but first or second, I think, are the ones that you could get into as an intermediate student. Again, these two, the scherzo and the ballade, are if you are more of a serious, let's say, intermediate student that definitely practices every day and that has some time to invest into that. But if you do have that, then it's totally mm -hmm. worth it because they are mm -hmm. very rewarding, musically incredibly beautiful, and pieces that 
will definitely get you to the next level, musically and technically. Speaking about Chopin, something mm -hmm. very important that I would suggest to any intermediate student is start getting into the Chopin studies. As you maybe know, if you've been watching my videos, I've made several videos about different Chopin studies, and I would definitely recommend that you start practicing the Chopin studies as an intermediate student, because you will probably have the technical skills that you need to start them. Don't be worried at all if you don't feel equipped to actually play through them. You don't need to do that, but you can start at a very slow tempo with the exercises. I will link all my Chopin study videos down below. I talked about the method, how I learned the Chopin studies, and it is a very long and gradual process. I started out playing the Chopin studies as an intermediate student at the age of 10 or 11, and I started out very slowly. It took me definitely two years before I played through Opus 10 number one at the final tempo, but this is what the process was all about. When I did play through it, I felt incredibly secure, and I felt like I could play it in my sleep. So definitely start practicing the Chopin studies. Check out the exercises that I've mentioned. I've made videos on Opus 10 number one, two, Opus 10 number nine, I think, also several of the Opus 25 ones. So the technique is musically incredibly beautiful and pieces that will definitely get you to the next level, musically and technically. Very rewarding, musically incredibly beautiful and pieces that will definitely get you to the next level, musically and technically. Speaking about Chopin, something very important that I would suggest to any intermediate student is start getting into the Chopin studies. As you maybe know, if you've been watching my videos, I've made several videos about different Chopin studies, and I would definitely recommend that you start practicing the Chopin studies as an intermediate student, because you will probably have the technical skills that you need to start them. Don't be worried at all if you don't feel equipped to actually play through them. You don't need to do that, but you can start at a very slow tempo with the exercises. I will link all my Chopin study videos down below. I talked about the method, how I learned the Chopin studies, and it is a very long and gradual process. I started out playing the Chopin studies as an intermediate student at the age of 10 or 11, and I started out very slowly. It took me definitely two years before I played through Opus 10 number one at the final tempo, but this is what the process was all about. When I did play through it, I felt incredibly secure, and I felt like I could play it in my sleep. So definitely start practicing the Chopin studies. Check out the exercises that I've mentioned. I've made videos on Opus 10 number one, two, Opus 10 number nine, I think, also several of the Opus 25 ones. So check them out.